Dad? What are we looking at? Joshua asked, as he reined his horse up to mine. I don't know. But if they stay out here like this, they will die of exposure, I stated while sliding my right foot from its stirrup. The creaking sound of shifting leather from the saddle accompanied me as I slid off my mount. Stepping to the ground, the mare nervously shifted around, her front legs pawing from left to right, with tension from the unknown scenario she found herself in, dropping the reins. I stepped forward, showing my empty hands, trying to show I wasn't a threat. Calmly as I could, I tried to talk to them. It's cold out here. If you guys stay out here without a way to stay warm, someone's going to die from the cold. The words coming out in a frozen mist. No response. Taking my heavy coat off and holding the woolen red and white plaid jacket out with both hands, I ambled up to the man and woman. Miss, take my coat. I'll build you guys a fire. The man stepped in front of his shivering counterpart, a serious look on his face. His hands balled up in a fist, but they remained at his side. Careful, Dad. He looks like he wants to kick your ass, Joshua chirp, as he watched it all unfold from atop his perch. No, he's just trying to make sure I don't mean any harm to the lady, I replied. As I shifted my gaze downward, I avoided eye contact, trying to reduce the tension. A few more steps. Now I was with in arm's reach of the man. Extending my arms out as far as I could, I tried to hand the coat to which even one would grab it. After a few seconds of indecision, the man finally took the coat from me and gave it to the young woman. She quickly wrapping the heavy woolen fabric around her slender frame. Okay, we need to build you a fire, I told the pair. A confused look on both their faces. Clearly they had no idea what I was saying. Taking a step back, I slowly turned, spying a large mound of dried brush. Josh, throw me your lighter. Josh, still sitting atop his horse, reached into his front coat pocket, and upon retrieving a small green lighter, gave it a flick toward me. Catching it with my right hand, I gave its wheel a flick, sparks flying as the flame caught. I started walking up to the mound of grass. Son, you better get down. I need some dead brush. I stopped halfway through my request. I could see a purple hand with what looked like green blood dripping down the wrist, laying under some of the grass. I could hear the sound of a creaking whine of his leather saddle as he came off his horse. There's somebody under there, he shouted as he stumbled past me in a hustle. Joshua made it to the covered figure. He began to hurriedly pull the grass blanket off and away from the body underneath. I heard a heated commotion behind us. I glanced back at the standing figures the women was being restrained by the man, and she was yelling at him in the exotic language. He didn't yell back. He only had his head turned and making eye contact with me. He nodded only once, and I hen turned back to the face. Her. Shit. There's a few people under here, Joshua yelled out as he finished pulling the grass away. He then shot up to his full height and ran back to his horse. I now had a full view. Two young women and a man all looked to be in their early twenties. Their faces were covered in burns, and the man had a broken nose and cuts on his face. All were leaking the same green blood. Joshua slid to his knees as he came to rest next to the first hurt women. He has his bedroll and the small first aid kit he kept in his saddlebags. He opened the worn-out blanket so it could fully cover the three injured bodies. Josh, I need you to ride as hard as you can back to the house. Grab the farm truck and stock trailer and shitload of blankets. Bring them up here quickly. Just run over the sagebrush. The brush guard should keep the radiator from any major damage, I told him. I need to call for... I cut him off. Don't you call anyone? I looked him in the eyes and said as clearly as I could, I don't think these people are humans. 
Look at their color. It's not makeup and their blood is green. I continued, and get that big first aid kit from the kitchen. If your granddad is there, get him up here. Why granddad? Josh questioned, already picking the reins of his horse from the ground. He was a battlefield medic when he was your age. He's the best shot these folks have. I shouted. He was gone in a whirl.